Hello everyone, and this is my review for the Yumi Super. Uh, today I'm going to be telling about my last experience with it over this past week. Uh, we're going to discuss the good and the bad. Actually, I think this is more of a good phone than a bad phone, but it does have one real crippling weakness. What you're getting from Yumi is a MediaTek Helio P10, which is a slightly downgraded version of the uh, Helio X10 CPU that they pushed out a couple of years ago as one of their flagship phone or processors. It's uh, an eight core processor, uh, four powerful cores, and then four low energy cores for uh, more efficiency during idle times. And it's got a pretty beefy GPU. It's a Mali T860, uh, which is it's, uh, my use with it. It was really good for the most part. Um, some games had a bit of a struggle in terms of graphics performance. Uh, but basically, that was just one of these real high-speed games that has a lot of video, uh, a lot of 3D textures coming at you real fast. It's kind of a racing game called Breakneck, um, but that's the only game that I encountered that had any issues with it. But well, let's get into talking about some of the benchmarks. And I guess before I get to talking about the benchmarks, I should talk about the packaging it came in. It comes in a black tin, which is the front and back, and it kind of comes apart almost like a sandwich. Uh, in the inside of it, there is some cardboard packaging that protects the phone itself with just a teeny bit of styrofoam, which worked well enough. The phone that I received was completely undamaged. It also comes with an AC adapter and a USB-C cable for charging and for data sync. The adapter itself is a bit on the heavy side, kind of falls out of the wall, and the adapter is also made for connections in China, I assume, where the phone is made. Uh, because it has the two round posts as the two, opposed to the two vertical ones that we here, have here in the United States. It does come with an adapter, however, which unlike the one that came with the Yumi Touch, does actually work. The phone itself looks quite nice. I'm not sure that I'm in love with gold, but I ordered it to see what it looks like. It looks a little bit more like Samsung Galaxy gold as opposed to the iPhone gold, which is purely a matter of preference on your part. But it is, uh, it's a very pretty phone nonetheless. Despite its appearance, it is actually, it feels much thicker and it is significantly heavier than the Yumi Touch, but that's also because this thing has a 4,050 milliamp hour battery. Let's go ahead and discuss the camera as well. It seems that the rear facing camera, your primary camera, does really well in most lighting situations that have some appreciable degree of light. In low light situations, the camera is not so great. It also has an HDR mode that actually helps out quite a lot in low light situations as it just brightens the whole picture up in general. However, the downside to that bit is that you have to hold the phone very steady for a couple seconds. I've taken a couple pictures that came out a little bit blurry with the HDR mode. It's easier to be done when you're not in a busy place or you're not in a place where you could potentially get bumped or move, like riding in a car might be a little shaky and prevent a good stable picture for the HDR effect. The picture-in-picture -picture mode of the camera, just like on the Yumi Touch, has a tendency to get uh, blown out and be not great in terms of lighting, especially when there's two varying degrees of light where one image is a lot brighter than the other image one of them is going to be very dark in comparison to the other. But otherwise, the picture-in-picture -picture seems to work okay. There doesn't seem to be a way to make that occur with any kind of video effects that I was able to find. Graphics performance. Yes, let's talk about that. I know that's what y'all really want to talk about. It's what I always enjoy really talking about, which is how does the phone perform when playing games? Let's be honest, the majority of us play some game or other to keep us distracted while we're out in the world doing stuff that we don't necessarily want to do. Be it the daily commute, being it just stuck in your office for a couple hours where you don't have any priority work to do, we all find a distraction. I am a big fan of Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, so this is a big benchmark for me, and this performs much better than the prior two phones I've reviewed, the Blue Studio C and the Yumi Touch. There's no graphical hang-ups, there doesn't take a long time to load stages, it's it's really great, it performs just as well as my iPhone 5S does or my iPad Air. I couldn't ask for anything more when it comes to Galaxy of Heroes. That being said, there are some concerns with other games. Pokemon Go, for example, this phone doesn't have the best GPS in the world, so it's not necessarily really accurate when it comes to tracking down Pokemon. 
but the actual 3D performance of Pokemon Go itself is fine when I do actually manage to run across something. Another game that I tested just to give it a shot and see what something else may perform is this game called Breakneck. That's one of these forever run games where basically you have to beat the timer uh, and don't get shot by the alien lasers that are in orbit and it performs pretty well uh, but it definitely has its moments of hang-ups I'm not the best at this game as you can see from this video but it performs pretty okay although there are moments where it does lag and choke up it's hard to tell in this video it's more noticeable during the actual gameplay Cellular service on this phone leaves a lot to be desired, and this is the phone's one crippling weakness. The Wi-Fi service is fine, you can pretty much get high-speed Wi-Fi anywhere, and this will actually read 5 GHz bands, unlike the Yumi Touch, so there's a respectable upgrade there. But when it comes to the cellular aspect, it is a real letdown. I mean time and time again, this phone would seemingly disconnect even though it would say that I have full 3G service and when it would give me no kind of service at all. And there were times where it said I had just the bare minimum edge, which is just basic 2G, that's voice and uh, text service. And I would have a very good 3G signal apparently. I could run speed tests and it would give me pretty good scores. So this phone is just, it's all over the map when it comes to the cellular part of things. I think that if you get a few updates in, it will be a lot better, kind of like the Yumi Touch. When I first got it, it I went through, I had to think, uh, I think four updates before it actually started working in a respectable manner, and there's only been two updates for the Yumi Super since I've had it. So who knows, hopefully going forward we will get some more updates and the Yumi Super will be a better performing phone. Uh, there are times with some of the cellular speed tests I did that I would get 17 or 18 megabits per second, which is respectable, especially over 3G. But it's if you can't get service at all, if you have to toggle airplane mode on and off just to get the cellular radios to work correctly, it doesn't make it a very good phone. So that is really the big letdown for the Yumi Super. Let's get to talking back to the good things about the phone, which is raw performance for a $200 phone that really, really does well. The sequential read and write tests for this phone are definitely better than what was on the Yumi Touch, but it's not mind-blowingly good. Uh, it's about, uh, about 25 megabytes per second more on the read. Uh, when it comes to something like Antutu, there is a whole another 15,000 points difference between the Yumi Super and the Yumi Touch. I don't want to come down too hard on the Yumi Super as we know MediaTek kind of shoots for that mid-range kind of what they call a mid-range premium phone with their SOCs and just to give it a comparison to the iPhone 5S which is about three years old now we can see that the Yumi Super loses out in every category except four. I want to point out where it has CPU multi-core this is kind of this is kind of disappointing the difference in score because the iPhone 5S only has a dual core and the MediaTek has eight cores. Granted, at its highest performance, only four of those cores will be operating, but just so you kind of get the dynamic between what this phone is offering and something that was considered a flagship phone a few years ago. To compare with something that's a little bit newer, I also took the scores from the iPhone 6S where the Yumi Super only won out in the UX image process. Since these are synthetic benchmarks, I don't know what this score means, but you're looking at almost double the performance in that one benchmark for the Yumi Super, so it's certainly got that going for it. I know, I know, I'm doing a bunch of comparisons of an Android phone to iOS phones, and that's not necessarily fair. So here's a OnePlus 3. I pulled the benchmark scores for it from Antutu. And as we can see, uh, these scores are significantly better. But this is a phone that is also retailing for $399. I bought the Yumi Super online for $219. So there's a big difference in terms of performance and cost uh, that you'll see associated with these two devices. But if you look at earlier in my video, you'll see that graphically this phone performs mostly just fine. So you can 
take it for what you will as to what you think is a better device. On to my favorite benchmark, which is Geekbench. I've been using Geekbench since back in the day where I would compare my Power Max to Windows computers. From here, we can see that the Yumi Super's uh, scores are, are pretty decent. Uh, on the single core side of things, it's about 235 points more on the single core. Uh, on the multi-core, it's 500 points more than what we got on the Yumi Touch. If we compare the single core to other devices, you can see it doesn't really necessarily stack up with uh, some of the newer flagship phones, and these honestly aren't even new flagship phones, but it is kind of in the same ballpark as some of the older flagship phones, which I guess is a good mid-range device if that's what you're looking for. On the multi-core side of things, it's more of the same. It's performing pretty well with some older flagship phones that are a year, year and a half old, but it is it is hanging in there with them, so I, I guess that's a good thing. It's going to be, being that this is a cheaper phone than something like the Galaxy S6, which is still pretty high, it's a pretty good deal, so maybe something that you'll want to consider. Hooray for graphics benchmarks. We've already seen how it performs in real world in terms of graphics, but looking at some of the 3D Mark scores here, we're going to start with Slingshot uh, using uh, ES 3.1 and it performs reasonably well it's not stellar but the gpu in here is kind of a higher mid-range gpu it's not really a premium gpu but that's kind of it goes hand in hand with this uh, the mediatek soc in general so it's this, i believe the molly is the mediatek's uh, proprietary gpu so with that in mind you kind of you kind of see where it goes, kind of a, a upper mid-range CPU with upper mid-range graphics chip. It does overclock reasonably well, as we can see here at the end of the Slingshot graphics benchmark, how the uh, GPU throttles from about uh, 800 megahertz to 1.2 gigahertz. So it's got a reasonable overclocking headroom, and the phone did not get particularly hot while I was using it during these benchmarks. I just want to go ahead and make a disclaimer here that the Yumi Super was not able to run the Open Slingshot ES 3.0 benchmark. It would start, and every time, invariably, it would fail. I don't know why. So we're going to go straight into Ice Storm, and Ice Storm performs really well. The uh, numbers here will show that it stays above 30 frames per second in really in every test. I know the physics test shows 29.3 frames per second, but I. I'm somebody with excellent eyesight, and I couldn't really tell a difference there. Um, I, from watching the benchmark itself, it runs perfectly fine, and it looks very good. So I don't see any any reason to complain about it at all. Uh, graphically, uh, you can take a look at the graph here, and you kind of see how things bounce up and down, uh, and it has its peaks and it has its valleys for sure. But it, as you can tell, it's a lot of the time it's definitely above 40 frames per second and gets closer to the 60 frames per second mark. Going on to Ice Storm Extreme, we see more of the same from the phone in that it performs well for a very intensive graphics test. A lot of the time spent in the frames per second counts was definitely it was definitely noticeable when things would drop into the low 20s and if you look at the graph here you see a lot of peaks and valleys uh, again, the CPU in here, it overclocks really well, hitting that 1.2 gigahertz threshold that it seems to be capable of doing without an issue. Again, I, graphically speaking, the phone really runs great, and I really do think that it's a great device if you're looking to not spend a whole lot of money. I wasn't really sure where to put this next section, so I did it uh, after the graphics performance and after the wireless discussion. I do want to apologize for the quality of the video, I was using a webcam on a cheap laptop I have, but it's just there to demonstrate that the Yumi Super will use the Google Cast feature using anything on the phone without an issue. This is running over a 2.4 gigahertz frequency, so this isn't even a 5 gigahertz setting, and as you can see, the graphics in the game are fluid, there's no hiccups, there's no hangups. It goes perfectly fine. I am connected to an NVIDIA Shield, so 
maybe that helps because it is definitely the best Android TV device out there. Uh, if you haven't really decided on what you want to do with the Android TV device, definitely give the NVIDIA Shield TV a look. While I'm on the topic of Google Cast, I also want to give a, just a little demo here showing that uh, using uh, Google Cast, you can cast anything from your Android phone to your Android TV. In this case, I'm just going to PCWorld.com, but I did it so that you can see that the pages actually scroll and they scroll well. The inline scrolls, as you saw there briefly, also work equally as well, and you can move up and down no issue at all with doing any of that. I also wanted to show off here that the Google Cast feature works very well when scrolling large uh, web pages that have a lot of embedded video content. Uh, this particular page that PC World had was one of their weekly recaps and I think they had seven YouTube videos embedded into the page. So it, uh, it takes a minute here to get it rolling but I was trying to launch this video in regards to the uh, new Battletech game that's coming out that they did a Indiegogo for or a Kickstarter program for. I don't know, some crowdsourced thing that they had started. And this is some pre-pre-pre-alpha footage that they had going. I'm a huge Battletech fan, so this is kind of speaking to my inner child from back in the day. But as you can see, after a little buffering, the load time gets going. There is a short pause there because this video is 28 minutes long, so there is a teeny bit of buffering that needed to occur. And that's it, everyone. That is my review for the Yumi Super. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, as you can tell from my review, I mostly had good things to say about this phone. I think it's a good phone. If the cellular service was just a little bit better, I think it would be a great phone, especially for $219. You can find it cheaper online at different places. I grabbed it off of uh, I grabbed it off eBay for that price. It was just a buy it now thing that they had going on, which was cheaper than what Amazon had it for. I think Amazon sellers were going for about two forty or so when I bought it. So if you can get it cheaper, get it cheaper. And if you're in an area that doesn't have a lot of LTE coverage and only has three G, and you're a T-Mobile or an AT&T customer or some other subsidiary that uses their networks, I think it's a good option for you. I just say give it a month and let's see if there's any updates that help improve that signal. Uh, I'm going to hang on to this and use it for another week and get back to you and let you know whether I in fact uh, have seen any improvements with the cellular service. So uh, in the meantime, hey guys, I, ho I hope you enjoyed it and if you've got any questions or comments, let me know and have yourselves a great day. Thanks for watching.